Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Shou Xuling. Today I'm going to present our work, uh, a neural based bandit approach to mobile crowdsourcing. Um, the recent proliferation of devices in the Internet of Things provides essential building components for smart cities, uh, including data generation, data management, and application handling. Um, data generation, for example, uh, requires a large scale deployment of sensors and actuators across urban areas, which can monitor and respond to the environment. These services re rely on the ability of multiple things to collect data, which is usually accomplished through mobile crowdsourcing, that is recruiting mobile workers with uh, mobile devices to complete subtask of an overall goal. For example, uh, we can uh, hire mobile workers with mobile devices to detect air pollution at different locations and then combine it into a citywide map. Or uh, we can deploy sensors at different locations to uh, sense road traffic. A crowdsourcing platform is uh, provided to connect task requesters with uh, mobile workers. So suppose a task requester needs help of mobile workers to collect data. The task requester can post the task on the platform. Then the platforms choose available workers to finish this task and provide the task requester with desired output. However, it's not affordable uh, for the uh, task requester to assign a single task to all available workers then the platform needs to choose which workers uh, to finish a task that can provide the highest task quality. However, uh, one challenge of doing so is that the qualities of different workers might vary greatly. So suppose an image recognition task, then the true label for an image is a dog. Some workers might correctly recognize it, but some others might not especially the people you know, who repeatedly enter wrong captures. And another challenge is that um, the task quality completed by a specific worker cannot be known beforehand. And thus, we have to assign a task to a worker first and then observe the task quality that this worker can generate. Moreover, uh, sometimes worker needs to collaborate uh, with each other to finish a single task. And the final quality of the task completed by multiple workers depends on the relationship between the subtask completed by each of them, which can be unknown. So for example, we, if we want to place sensors to detect contaminations, uh, as the blue regions in this figure showed um, the region that each sensor can detect. However, the total region that multiple sensors can detect is not a sum over the region that each of them can detect, as there can be overlaps between them. Uh, moreover, as we add more and more sensors, the amount of overlaps gets bigger. Um, that is to say, the benefit of adding more sensors is decreasing, which is called a diminishing return effect. Uh, also, the, the overlap cannot be known beforehand, thus making it difficult for us to determine how many sensors to deploy to achieve a good uh, quality to cost ratio. So um, motivated by a gambler who wants to know which slot machine can generate the most money, we formulate this problem as a multi-armed Bennett problem, or MAB for short. So if we consider mobile workers as arms, then the service provider wants to know which mobile workers can generate the highest task quality. Then uh, how can we identify those well-qualified workers? The answer is to use online learning. So suppose we have uh, three workers now, and then in the first round, we choose the first worker and observed the task quality that this worker can generate is 100. And then in the next round, we choose worker two and find as 30. 
And then for worker three, we find S80. So after we play multiple rounds, we can have a rough estimation about the qualities of these workers. Um, however, uh, mobile crowdsourcing has some uh, particular natures that are requiring us to uh, extend the basic and maybe settings. So for example, uh, the worker context can be used to predict their qualities. Um, a task with a specified task uh, location would be more suitable for workers that are, are close to that location. And a task with a deadline requirement would prefer workers who can travel fast. And also we can use the context of workers to predict new workers that we have never observed before. So suppose uh, a new user comes in and the service provider has no idea about its quality. Then if the service provider assigns a task to this new user, but finish the task with a poor quality, then the task requester would be angry and might not use the crowdsourcing, the crowdsourcing service anymore. So if we can use the worker context and predict that this worker is gonna be a bad one, then we can avoid this. Also the combinatorial nature needs to be considered as well. So as I mentioned, sometimes workers need to collaborate on a single task. Then in each round, we need to select multiple workers, that is multiple arms in each round, instead of just a single arm. And the challenge comes from the fact that the overall quality of the task depends on each worker's contribution, which, is, which can be unknown. So um, the goal of the service provider is to assign each task to promising workers to maximize the task quality. And due to is the features, as I mentioned before, we formulate it at, as a contextual combinatorial multi-armed bandit problem. So basically uh, the mobile workers are viewed as arms and it is contextual because workers have context which can be used to predict their qualities. And it is combinatorial because in each round we need to assign multiple workers to multiple tasks. So we need to select multiple arms in each round. And the single utility corresponds to the task quality completed by a single worker individually. And the overall utility refers to the overall task quality completed by multiple workers together. The single utility function represents the relationship between the expected task quality completed by a single worker and the worker's context. The overall utility function just represents the relationship between the overall quality of a task completed by multiple workers and the quality of each subtask that each worker generates individually. So that is the relationship between the single utility and the overall utility. Um, however, um, existing binary algorithms cannot deal with this problem. Um, for example, uh, some of them do not consider the worker context, such as UCB and uh, CMAB algorithm. Uh, some of them do consider context, but they assume a fixed structure of the utility function. For example, Lean UCB assumes a linear relationship. Uh, CCMAB and ACC UCB do consider a contextual and a combinatorial setting, but they assume the overall utility function is none. So in this way, they only need to learn the single utility of each worker and then refers to an oracle that can maximize the overall utility function to select multiple workers. However, as I mentioned, the overall utility function can be unknown in general. So uh, to this end, uh, we proposed um, an algorithm called neural MAB, which can deal with the limitation of existing Bennett works. So basically um, our work is based on online learning. That is it will use the observed single and overall utility uh, observed in the private uh, allocation decisions to learn 
and motivated by the distinguished learning ability of new networks, we use a new network model to learn the single and overall utility function. Um, this diagram shows uh, the details of the system architecture. Um, so basically, uh, in each round, the service provider needs to determine uh, which user should uh, finish a single task. Uh, so in ex exploitation phases, the service provider will select the optimal workers according to its estimation of the single and to total utility. And then after the service provider makes an allocation, it can use the observed single and overall utility to train the neural network. So specifically, it will use the observed um, single utility of each subtask completed by each single worker and the worker's context to train the neural network at the bottom level to learn the single utility function such that the output single utility can approximate the observed value. Similarly, um, it will use the observed single utility of each subtask and the observed overall utility of the task to train the new network at the top level to learn the overall utility function. So in summary, the input um, just can contain the context features of a different mobile workers and the output is the overall utility that these workers can generate together. Um, and also in exploration phases, it will randomly pick uh, workers to gather an unbiased training data to avoid being stuck at a local maximum. So uh, we evaluate the performance of our algorithms in a scenario where the, the, crowdsourcing, the crowdsourcing service provider needs to assign each location dependent task arriving sequentially in T rounds to a subset of candidate workers who are within a certain distance around the target location. Each user has uh, two contexts. The C1 denotes the distance between the worker and the task location, which is generated based on the Gowala dataset. And C2 represents the worker's history rating, which is a uniformly sampled from zero to one. The single utility function defines the subtask quality completed by a single worker, which is FC1 times C2, where F is a Gaussian probability density function with a mean zero and a standard deviation one. So intuitively, the single utility that a user, a worker can generate uh, will increase with his um, past uh, rating, but decrease with its distance. And the overall utility function defines the overall task quality completed by a group of workers that is the sum of the quality of each subtask completed by each single worker. And we set the budget constraint to be 20 in each round. Um, this figure uh, compares the cumulative regret of different algorithms. So the cumulative regret is defined as the cumulative difference between the optimal task quality that can be achieved in each round and the actual task quality that achieved by each algorithm. So the lower is better. Uh, we compare the performance of our algorithm to a random baseline that will randomly select workers in each round. And then we also compare to ACC, UCB and CCMAB, uh, which are two state-of-art finite algorithms. Um, however, as I mentioned before, these two algorithms cannot work if the overall utility function is unknown. So to compare the performance, we assume the overall utility function is known to, this to these two algorithms, but we make our algorithm to have no knowledge at all. So in other words, we evaluate the performance in a setting which is strongly in favor of the baseline algorithms. However, as you can see, Although our algorithm that is neural MAB gets a higher regret at the right beginning as it is learning the utility function, it can outperform all the baseline algorithms at around the 200th round. 
Also, if we expose the overall utility function to neural MAB, it can achieve an even lower regret, which is represented by the red line. And we plan to evaluate the performance of our algorithm in some more complicated um, ex uh, experiments. Okay, thanks everyone, that's it.